Hello and welcome to this, the fourth of our daily devotions based in 1 Corinthians 15. It's great to have you with us again. I don't know about you, but during this time of lockdown and isolation, I find that little surprises take on an even bigger significance. As I was leaving church one Sunday in the autumn, I passed through the churchyard at St John's and picked up a conker. I brought it home, planted it in this pot, put in some of our own homegrown compost and left the pot next to my shed for the next few months. Ten days ago, I got very excited when I noticed that there was something was happening. And you can see I've got a baby horse chestnut tree growing. The Christians of Corinth asked all sorts of questions about this resurrection life. How are the dead raised? What sort of body will they have? And Paul said to them that in many ways they're foolish questions. They're understandable questions, but they're foolish ones. Paul says, unless a conquer dies, it can't give birth to a new horse chestnut tree. And obviously, that new horse chestnut tree is very different sort of body to a conquer. See, I didn't plant a mini horse chestnut tree in this pot. I planted a conquer. It's grown into a horse chestnut tree. It's very different in nature. Paul writes these words in 1 Corinthians 15. So it will be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is shown per, sown peri, is perishable. It is raised imperishable. It is sown in dishonour. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. In the church that I grew up in as a child, there was an elderly man called Joe. If you met Joe, two things struck you immediately about him. Firstly, he was quite old. Secondly, he had a funny voice. It was squeaky and it was quiet and there was no way that he could shout. One of the last times I saw Joe was when I went to sing carols at his house one Christmas. Joe was at that stage largely confined to his house. He invited us in, joined us singing the carols. And at the end of it, told us his story. Joe had fought in the First World War in what he described as the Dardanelles campaign. Today we'd know better as Gallipoli. It was a disaster. Joe got shot in the throat and was close to death and spent some time in a hospital ship moored off the coast in the Straits of Dardanelles. When he was in that hospital ship Joe saw a vision of the Apostle Paul and as a result of that vision he turned to Christ and committed his life to following and serving Jesus. Joe ended by saying to us it was great to sing the carols with us but he was really looking forward to getting to heaven when he'd have a loud and a strong voice to sing the praises of Jesus not just this little squeaky one he had at the present. You see, Joe understood about resurrection life. And sometimes that resurrection life is described as eternal life, meaning it goes on forever. And some of us might think straight away, whoa, I wouldn't want that. I wouldn't want my life just to keep going on. You see, life after death isn't just more of the same, more of the daily grind, more of the problems of life just continues. It's a totally different experience. I wonder, what is it that gets you down? Is it physical illness or pain or suffering? Is it loneliness or, or sadness or a sense of loss? Perhaps you've lost people you love, members of your family, people you know in this coronavirus epidemic. Or perhaps it's a sense of injustice in the world and things aren't right. I have to say to you, being a Christian doesn't take away those things. We're human beings and therefore we experience them and go through them like everyone else. 
But being a Christian gives us hope that a time is coming and that a life awaits us when we'll not be beset by those things. John, in the book of Revelation, in chapter 1, tells us about a new heaven and a new earth. He tells us that God will come and dwell among his people, that he will wipe away every tear in their eye and there'll be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. That's the new resurrection life that Paul is writing to the Corinthian church about. It's waiting for those who are in Christ. You see, this body that we've got now dies. It dies perishable or dishonoured or weak, but is raised in resurrection life imperishable, glorious and powerful. That's what Joe got. Job got that when he got to heaven, his voice was going to be very different because his body was going to be very different. And Jesus' resurrection tells us that that time is coming and awaits those who are in Christ. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you that eternal life and that resurrection life is so glorious and so good. Thank you, Father, that we won't have to suffer the things we go through now, but we'll be able to be in joy being in the presence of his God as he moves among his people. Father, we thank you for this. Amen.